three, two, one. I'm the king of the world. That was Leo DiCaprio in The Revenant. Um, famous quote from The Revenant. I'm Adam from Your Movie Sucks. This is Sardonicast. Hello. I'm Ralph from Ralph the Movie Maker. I'm joined by... I'm Alex from IG and... Uh... Man, I, I was really hoping you were going to do a, like a true Leo rolling around screaming impression. To oh, wow. No. Like. <laughs> Just grunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite quote. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, it's, it's a movie with very little dialogue. And I wasn't about to, I wasn't about to pull up a quote from the film, really. Because none of it is like particularly funny. <laughs> so. <laughs> no. these, these pelts. These yeah. pelts. <laughs> um. Before we talk about The Revenant, though, uh, we got like a little bit of movie news. It's not like the newest movie news, but this is an article from October 25th, IndieWire, uh, saying Batgirl was just the beginning Warner Brothers discovery to write off $2 billion worth of content in quarter three, which I mean, I don't know all the specifics here and the article doesn't really get into the specifics. I guess we won't get like a detailed breakdown of like everything they're writing off maybe we will eventually mm. but that's kind of concerning in my opinion god i didn't hear this Did you yeah. say two billion more? that's what it says that's what it says um yeah what is going on there like who yeah. the fuck is running like, i mean they have a new ceo or whatever right so after the merger just some guys deciding to run it like a business without considering art. Think of the things they've released. Think of the things oh, yeah. they've decided, like, oh, that's good. Like, Black Adam. Don't yeah. worry, darling. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, that was good. God, that was or even just stuff that they, they've been releasing on, like, the Max Originals. Like, I saw a trailer for, what was it, Velma? Like, that new <laughs> Scooby-Doo thing? <laughs> like, oh, there's a oh, trailer. Yeah, with Mindy there, Kaling. Yeah. And I'm like, this is being made? And not the bat? Bat cat? What was it? Bat girl? I don't know. Bat girl. <laughs> like you already yeah, finished girl. the movie. Why they, but why are they so picky though? Why are they so picky about what they make at this point? Because no matter what they make, it sucks. I just don't know why they don't release things that are finished. I mean, for money, obviously, but it must be something to do with like residuals. Yeah, yeah. It's just like just pure money trying to cut corners somewhere. It's such a complicated thing to even try to comprehend. Of like, oh, this is done. You would release it and make money, but you can save more money through some tax write-off scheme <laughs> by not releasing it. That's yeah, so stupid. No one sees it. <laughs> yeah, no, just like stupid. count it as a loss and then you're saving money theoretically. Is that a gamble on whether or not it would be underperforming? I guess so. It's sad. Yeah, it's easy. But they just don't want it to be like an embarrassment. But I don't know why when the stuff they release is like shit. Also, yeah. Like that that Gossip Girl show is like terrible. I think that's HBO exclusive HBO Max. Yeah. I've been I've been kind of made to watch that show. Have you seen that Gossip Girl? No, I've heard of it though. It's, mm -mm. it's fucking pain. Yeah. Well, it's like a remake of that old show. Oh, it's a remake. Okay. I was like, it sounds old. I wasn't sure if it was still going. The old ones with Blake Lively. And um, I think a couple other people got on to do things, but mainly Blake Lively, so I know from it. This new one, though, it's like just total shit. <laughs> it's so bad, the <laughs> writing and the dialogue. Um, it's like hilariously cheesy and corny. And yeah, they just don't know like where they're going. Like every episode ends with like a little like narration, like from the Gossip Girl or whatever. But like nothing is happening in these episodes. They're just like. Hey, Gossip Girl here. I guess there's secrets around every uh, corner or whatever. <laughs> we're it's like, it goes, yeah, it goes nowhere. It's like, yeah, nothing happened this episode. So it's like, what is there to like conclude? What is there to like recap? It's just that it all meant nothing. Yeah, all right, I'm so going to read a part of the article, see if we can understand it a bit yeah. better. The moves are a part of Warner Brothers Discovery's plan to achieve cost synergies and trim up to $3 billion in debt in its first two years following Discovery's merger with Warner Media back in April. One of the more high-profile cuts last quarter was the HBO Max film Batgirl, which cost roughly $80 million and was near completion before it was ultimately axed. Hmm. Still don't understand. They're in trouble. <laughs> cost synergy. Yeah, yeah, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> cost just, synergy. Just There's a bunch of jargon. Just making up as they go along. Yeah. Sounds like shit. Yeah. They're in trouble. Bad news. But like, 
two billion, and if like the Batgirl one, and that's like a high profile one they're cutting. If that's what like eighty million, like where, where are these numbers coming from? <laughs> How quickly does it add up? Because surely there's much less successful studios in terms of the money they bring in, but they're we don't hear about them doing this stuff all the time, you know? Like surely Warner Brothers is doing better than. Lionsgate, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like you'd imagine. I don't know. Lionsgate doesn't even have their own streaming service, you know. Like surely, yeah. surely, surely, HBO Max is like bringing in some money. It's like what in the top ten, like movie streaming services or something, right? They don't have anything. Yeah, well, Warner Brothers has DC. They have franchises. Lionsgate has Saw. I guess I'm just John not a businessman. <laughs> I guess I'm not a. I'm not either. Money man. But they, they know franchises. I mean, they they have franchises, both of them. I they mean, Lionsgate has Saw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and John Wick and Hunger Games. Yeah, well, what are they doing with Hunger Games? Because theme park. Um, aren't they actually doing some spinoff shit? Yeah, they're doing like a prequel, I think. Oh, oh my okay. God, just just <laughs> we need to just stop. Who's uh, Lord of the Rings? Is that uh, a new line? Well, it was New Line. I don't know if that's still the case. Isn't it like Amazon? Thing? Well, no, Amazon has the, they rights buy the rights to... I don't... Well, they don't have the rights to the similar Cimmerillion, I don't think. Yeah. But they have the rights to like... So they make up their own shit. Yeah, I think they... I guess they have the rights to Lord of the Rings? I don't know. Some nonsense that I don't want to try and... <laughs> understand right now <laughs> yeah it didn't make the show oh, any on. better either way i was worried for a while that uh the gumball movie was going to be canceled along with batgirl apparently that's still mm. happening according to cartoon brew uh i don't know if either of you have seen the amazing world of gumball uh, uh, cartoon brew yeah i have seen it, it yeah i've funny. seen like a couple episodes it's fucking making awesome. a movie of it it's so good yeah, there's going to be a I didn't realize you were a Gumball supposedly. fan. Well, I wasn't until the past like couple of years, I guess. I had, I had seen um, just bits and pieces on television before and been like, wow, that's a really cool blend of animation styles and looks like they're putting a lot yeah. of effort into this sort of thing. Um, but then actually going through and, you know, watching the first season on HBO Max, I'm like, this is fucking awesome. Like, this is a genuinely great kids show. I think that anybody that, you know, Probably a lot of people that appreciated certain aspects of like SpongeBob as a kid's show that was still mm. funny and clever and put effort into things, you know, um, not exactly the same tone or style, but um, yeah, they really care. And it's so apparent. Um, with I've seen show. some like good absurdist stuff from that. Like I've seen like loads of good compilations like on YouTube of some of the like best jokes and it's I would surprisingly highly, witty. I would highly recommend Gumball. I think you would love it, Alex. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to give it a shot then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't have anything else to say stuff. about this fucking stupid HBO Max shit. It's just stuff we've already said, I mm -hmm. guess. Like Yeah, the just the economics of it, I just don't I don't get it. Like how <laughs> Like, surely there's money to be made by just releasing like that. You've gotten to the point where you have like a Batgirl movie. You've got Michael Keaton involved. You've got all these like actors signed up. All this money on the table. Brendan I just don't Fraser understand was why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was gonna be like Firefly or something. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's just a really strange story, and I want to understand <laughs> how it even makes sense to do this, like economically. Yeah. Imagine, <laughs> like. The directors have had other projects, at least. not Nothing, like, huge. I forget the other things we were talking about. That, oh, yeah, they did the uh, remake... Uh, sorry, the newest uh, Bad Boys. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that oh, one. Oh, man. But then yeah, who was this? Right. Who was playing Batgirl? Who was that again? I'm trying to find her IMDb. Who is she? God, I can't remember. Exactly, right? Yeah, no idea. No that's idea, a, that's, that's exactly the point I'm making, is, like... Imagine how she must feel <laughs> like it's supposed to be like your big yeah. break and like all of these emotions leading up to this release. And then eventually there, you know, some CEO is like, eh, well, you can save money by even if it was like a bad movie that could still 
get you a lot of opportunity in the industry. Um, yeah. Just proving that you can be in a leading role. Um, or at least even just being attached to like a superhero in some way could probably get you like voice acting gigs for like a video game or like TV adaptation or something, you know, um, mm-hmm. that's got to suck being bad girl. Yeah. And it was so heavily yeah. publicized too. It couldn't even, couldn't even l- like keep it quiet and just be like, Oh, nobody knows about it sort of thing. Don't want to disappoint people. It's like, it's already public. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's weird about it. Like, there are plenty of these, like, scripts that float around for, like, decades, but it's weird for it to just get so far. All this, like, footage be out there, and then it just, no, forget about it. Yeah. Mm. Oopsie. I guess it's all deleted. Speaking of all that footage, there was a lot of footage in the movie Blind, and we all saw the movie Blind. It was a lengthy Uh, film. Um, very polarizing. Yeah, some love. Isn't it almost three hated. hours long? Yes. Yeah. It yeah. Is, uh, it's pretty long. Um, I drove into the city to see it. In, yeah. In the Paris theater, seen in theaters. I thought it took an it took an hour. I thought that <laughs> this movie was crazy. I thought that this was like a very yeah. special film because it was so fucking weird, and. I can see why a lot of people liked it, um, but I think it just kind of it kind of added to the chaos in the same way that like Ang Lee's directing in the film Hulk did, where it's like what the <laughs> what the fuck is going on? One of those like perfect you Hulk? disasters. It, no, it did because remember how crazy the directing was in that movie, and it took like so yeah, long that for was me trying to be, to be like, a comic book. Yeah, it took me a while to realize yeah. it was trying to do that. This was trying to be photographs of Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. It was based that off was of like, photographs, that's, apparently. Because people are like, why are the aspect ratios flipping, and why is the yeah. color changing from black and white to color? It's like, it's trying to, like, replicate f- photographs of Marilyn Monroe. Like, in the in the cinematography. I'm like, okay, that's an interesting choice. Like, I thought the movie looked pretty great. Like, I thought it looked beautiful, actually. At times, there's like real beauty to it, even though, like you said, it is kind of chaotic. Very chaotic. Yeah, just trying to like figure out what it was going for. Cause I was, yeah, appreciating things like that about it too. Um, like it is stylistically interesting and this, like, yeah, catching like the, the famous frames you'd know, like hidden in there, but um, in motion. Um, a lot of the look is what is nailed, but it is like still three hours long it is incredibly chaotic like this total roulette of characters and like kind of an abstract framing um and it's just to me like okay so yeah you want to have the realism of like capturing these these images but at the same time it's not really a biopic it's not trying to accurately really portray her life as far as i understand it's like kind of more creative license just trying to explore like yeah imagery and kind of ideas and kind of the misery of so it. it's based on a book mm-hmm. and the book is like the author says it's not based on a true like it's not a true story like she never claims a true story it's like fiction she wrote like about her life and i don't think there's like a based on a true story thing like in this movie at all like a title card or anything you know i i think it's like purely fiction um and I thought that was like kind of interesting how they like kind of played with fiction. Some people are saying like the movie's like tasteless, right? And that's like a criticism, a huge criticism against it. It's like it's it's ruining her legacy. Mm-hmm. And like it's got, yeah. there's a lot of shock value in there for sure. It's pretty disturbing. I think of the movie Spencer as something that yeah, it's like creative that. liberty is with an existing person. Um, but when I watch that film, I can think of like really, I can think of ways where I'm like, okay, I can understand the benefit of that because you wouldn't want to necessarily have this whole uh, backstory explaining who who this royal family is and why what their perception in the media is. It's sort of like a, a jumping off point to tell a story. Whereas mm. I don't know if like 
I'm trying to understand like what exactly about Marilyn Monroe uh, was the reason for any kind of jumping off point with this film. Cause like to me, it's, it could just be like, Oh, just a fictional famous person. And I'm not offended by them taking liberties with the, uh, you know, the real life Marilyn Monroe. Like, I feel like you should be able to tell any story you want. I just didn't see the benefit of it. Um, you know, when you make a decision I, and there's no, <laughs> I can't, I can't understand the, the, yeah. Yeah. I was getting lost the in that point too. of doing it. Um, is where it kind of loses Trying to me. figure out what they were trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, what was the purpose of a lot It's of just like Spencer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is, like, pretty cruel to her, the whole movie. Well, yeah, I don't even, like... She's not even, like, alive. Like, I don't care about... <laughs> I don't care about Marilyn Monroe's feelings I mean, just, right just now. just the character. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking um, about just the character in the movie. I, I will say, like, so if this was... If this was not Marilyn Monroe, I would feel the exact same way about the movie. In the sense that, like, if I was huh. watching any other character... Um, really? Okay. I, I feel... Well, you know, I can't say for sure, but I feel like I would feel that way. Because, like, when I, when I think about what happens to the character, and I guess spoiler warning for people who don't want to be spoiled for this uh, movie... Um, the way that they handled certain aspects, like the rape scene, it's not like, oh, this is poorly handled because it's Marilyn Monroe. I think it was just poorly handled in the context of the film in the sense where it's like, I wasn't sure what they were trying to say about it in terms of like, it just kind of like the, the first one that happens. Um, it's kind of mm -hmm. just like it happens and then it's gone. And the way it's like so quickly edited and just sort of brushed to the side in like a transitionary scene, it's like, is this supposed to be like a comedic like, is this supposed to be like, oh, haha, ha, like what a living like I, I don't it's it's weird how um how the film treats that as kind of just like a brushing off sort of like uh move on to the next scene sort of thing um it's it, it's like the film is trying to treat it there there's like an absence of weight to it which is like makes me start to think like okay well what what's the point of showing it you know um and i, I yeah it, it Regardless of whether or not it's Marilyn Monroe, it feels like weird to me. Yeah, the intent is definitely muddy. Um, and it feels like it was trying something, but uh, that's the risk with the the experiment is that it can kind of <laughs> fall flat on its face and not particularly work. But I find it interesting what you're saying about uh, imagining this film without it being about Marilyn, because I, I can't mm -hmm. even picture it without that aspect is like all built around that relying on that imagery relying on basically anna uh -huh. de Armas doing oh her like God. impression i forgot about the accent yeah. which for me like <laughs> yeah the accent was really bugging me man it was yeah. pulling me out um oh what her accent coming out yeah i did yeah. hear it come through she, she's chilean i think but it was like a very yeah. weird like yeah uh, okay. there's i it, she, she sounds spanish but i think she's from chile i i'm not sure but um she yeah it's it's so weird i wrote down like so many instances of this in case i like decided to have like an edit or video or something i'm really busy with a lot mm. of things it might happen it might not but um just the way that she pronounces certain words is so if it was not marilyn monroe then it wouldn't be an issue <laughs> you know yeah that's the thing she's got such a distinct like intonation yeah. like marilyn monroe so it's like you're you're expecting something in particular and you're not getting it yeah that, performance. that's an instance where it's like okay well if this was its own character then i wouldn't be distracted by the inconsistencies in the accent or like this clear attempt to mask your uh chilean i believe accent uh and try to do an American accent, I guess, but just not successfully pulling it off. Um, hmm. I wonder if, like, if Andrew mm. Dominic really wanted to tell this story, and he's a really interesting director, for sure. Like, I'll, I'll see whatever he makes next, even more so because of this. I thought that this was, like, just a, such a crazy movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's so he said bizarre. he read the book years ago. He said he read it like ten years ago. Oh, yeah. He never thought he'd make a movie out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh weird. And then uh, he got the offer to do what I guess, or he he made the movie. He I think he said something like a women from that era, like 
a bunch of whores or something like that. What? That's his quote. <laughs> the director said that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that bunch of whores. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't, I didn't do a deep dive. Yeah. That's a lot of like the director's comments kind of like are kind of weird about this movie. I heard that there were some questionable things he said. Yeah. That made it seem like he doesn't yeah. really respect the, uh, you know, Marilyn or like the subject, which is like weird because then it's like, yeah, why it's are you just, making... It's just actresses from that period. The movie. Yeah, yeah. why are you even doing that? Yeah. I guess that's like what he's exploring. It's like a, you know, how fame like destroys your life or something. Have you both seen his other films? So he's done Assassination yeah. of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford, Killing Them Softly. And I think the only one I haven't seen, the only feature I haven't seen from him is, is Chopper. Which yeah, I'm looking Chop for right yeah, to I saw Killing the Them Softly when that came out, but um, yeah. not the others. Yeah, I saw the Jesse James one. That was great. They're all like pretty different from the ones that I've seen, and he's got like a, a style for sure. But they're all like very different. They're all good though. All his movies are good. Oh, and he did a couple episodes of uh, Mind Hunter. Just looking at oh his yeah, that's true. yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, but they were good. I really uh. I feel for you, Ralph, because like this is one of those films where it's like almost kind of like um, the discussion behind the movie is kind of like almost weaponized in a way. Um, I don't think that you know yeah. someone uh, <laughs> you know someone who enjoys this movie for its like artistic choices is you know not like oh you're a sexist or sort of thing. So I feel for you in that sense. You've got like a tough <laughs> a tough position to defend just because people are kind of you know, weird about this movie. There's like yeah, a conversation. But, well, it seems like people, yeah, like they love it or they hate it. This like is, yeah. Certain people are like, yeah, this is great. Reminds them of the fire walk with me. One of the most polarizing movies in a long time, honestly. Yeah, it's polarizing. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely see the criticisms with it. Um, I, I have, I more had an issue with the scene of like her talking to the, the baby. That was like, yeah, yeah I, we needed to bring that scene. up. That yeah. the, a strangely pro life. What, what does it film. mean? That was weird. Yeah, is that is that really what they were saying? With I think that? it's just yeah, it just has a pro life angle. I think that's oh, what okay. they were trying to get at. Quite, yeah. Otherwise, I don't know no, why don't they know. would keep doing. it. <laughs> I'm not like a big Marilyn Monroe <laughs> like the talking Lord feet. The, the oh my god! Yeah, the character didn't want to. Like, is that like yeah. a big thing with Marilyn? Like, character is, didn't want that to happen. Like, I, I didn't really understand what it was trying to <laughs> communicate with that. Kind of like the whole movie as a package. I was like, yeah, there's all these like floating ideas and crazy concepts, but it's just not, it's just not coming together for me in like any kind of tangible way. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. a weird thing in the movie. I think that's what most people had an issue with. It was like, yeah, why are there so many scenes of like us having to see like Marilyn Monroe's fetuses just like also, in close up? Like, Everything like fucking is weird. so fucking bizarre about it because we get like talking, talking dead fetus, and it's like played kind of seriously, like it, you know? Oh yeah, it's serious. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then no, like, it's very serious. There's, I think we get multiple scenes in this film that are like interior POV, like from inside her vagina. <laughs> like while yeah. she's like getting an abortion yeah. I was like, what fetus. an interesting choice for a shot <laughs> and it's like i i get why people say that she is like they, it, it's a weirdly sexualized movie um because mm -hmm. like it, there's there's so many scenes in this movie where she's just like okay she's just topless she's like at home like by herself like there's no like it seems like she's topless for like at least 60% of the movie. <laughs> like, that's what it felt. I, I know that's probably yeah. an, an well, exaggeration. Well, that was one of the more, like, but it's just appropriate like... things to me, right? With her being, like, a sex symbol. That's, like, mm -hmm. one of her... Yeah. Her key kind of identity things, you know? It's, like, her sexuality, how she leveraged it at the time and used it as mm -hmm. part, of the, part of the brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. Like, I, I liked her in the sense that she looked just like Marilyn Monroe, basically. With the approach they took. Yeah, I wish it was more than just the look. They should have dubbed her, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah, I'd be fine with that. Because <laughs> she does have the look. They might have done that with her singing. Scenes. I mean, it wouldn't be the only, like, odd choice for, like, the presentation. If they just had her completely dubbed. Oh, yeah. not Ch She's from Cuba, not Chile. That's yeah, I, I, I said she's Cuban. Thank you, sorry. I said I Cuban. Yeah. Bam. 
Um, Got me. <laughs> but yeah, you see, um, her, you see your. I mean, you will hear her Cuban accent come through at times. But yeah, this movie takes a lot of big swings. Like it's trying to be challenging, and then like it just sometimes it doesn't work. The thing with the mouths, all their mouths being up a wide bat, like we were talking about and mm-hmm. other things. Oh, that. Oh, yeah, that it's weird. F- yeah. like Snapchat mm-hmm. filter. And, and the you know the fetus. Yeah. You oh know, my the Snapchat God. filter. Yeah. I forgot about that. Well, there's just like a million <laughs> things about the movie. They're like, yeah, that's really. It's a big swing and a miss. A it's huge like a big miss. swing. Huge swing and a miss. Huge swing and a miss. Yeah, yeah, colossal swing. So it's like uh, Southland Tales. You gotta respect it. <laughs> yes. You gotta respect it for being just so fucking crazy. Yeah, but I, I don't I don't want to show it because I like it looks beautiful and the soundtrack so good. Score for this movie really great by Nick Cave. Mm-hmm. Not Nick Cage. Nick oh, Cave. Yeah, the other. The the score is so good for this movie. I'm like, oh man, it's great. I. Wish the movie was just tight. It's like with so many biopics. Like, I think it has the Gotti problem. Mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> or it's just like, it's, you're going through the guy's whole life, or like Stu Unger or something. It's like, you're going through the guy's whole life. Like, can't you just like pick like a, a, a one little chapter to yeah, focus on? Yeah, that was the issue. Like, I trying happen. to do like someone's whole life. Yeah, because it's like so yeah. much to focus I on. I kept starting getting like interested or, you know, enveloped in certain characters or certain like moments in her story, but it is like the pacing is so quick. It jumps around so much. It moves on to the next bit of drama. Yeah. You can't, like, yeah, relish in it for long enough. Yeah, exactly. Like Bobby Cannavale or whatever. It's great. Oh, and then he's gone. And then yeah, Adrian yeah. Brody, and he's gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just keep doing that. So it's been a while since I've seen this movie. I don't know, a month or something. But it feels like forever. Yeah, yeah. Same. Um, One of my notes is that it feels like it didn't have any sense of direction. And now I'm kind of just, mm-hmm. just remembering, like, it seemed like just a series of, like, really short bursts of instances where she just winds up crying for some reason. Like, that seems to just be, like, where every scene just leads is, like, she's just, like, I'm yeah. going to cry again. And Yeah, something miserable followed by something miserable. Didn't feel like miserable. it was leading to any particular place. Didn't really feel like it was, like, even in so many other stories that exist where it's, like, oh, the only goal is just to tell a story of someone's life. Um, it really, it, it felt like there wasn't anything, like, wrapping it together, you know? We're mm-hmm. kind of just like, I don't know. This movie could have chopped off an hour and would have been no different to me because it's just yeah, a lot exactly. of the same it's very stuff long. over and over. Yeah. It could almost be a mini series. Doesn't really feel justified. Maybe that's just mm-hmm. Andrew Dominic being like, well, it's on Netflix. It doesn't matter how long it is. Because, like, this Assassination of Jesse James is a very long movie, also. <laughs> I feel like the yeah, length. but that movie was paced much better. Like, there's like lots of really interesting. I mean, that had scenes. a place where it was going. It's in the title. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you could tell. You could yeah. you could sense where yeah. the film was it definitely going. Play around with the title. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. It never feels like it's going anywhere, or like what its ultimate point is. It just kind of ramble just in every direction. Yeah, people were walking out when I saw it. I think people were where expecting were a movie like. Oh, sorry. Where they're walking out. Yeah, yeah. Ralph cut in theaters before the Netflix release. Uh, Damn. So I think they were expecting a movie kind of like Elvis or something, which is funny, you know, because they were like an older couple. That is mm-hmm. funny. But that's yeah. not what this not is. Like that. It's kind of the total. Yeah, universe. right. Because that's kind of like I'm glad it isn't that. I think that's why I like kind of liked it more than everyone else. I'm like, at least it's not that kind of shit. This is like a really gross, like. So it's like a Saw movie or something, like how over the top and disturbing it is. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's like, at least it's better than something like Elvis or Bohemian Rhapsody. I mean, I actually liked Elvis, but it's not trying to be something like that. Or like the new Whitney Houston movie. Oh, yeah. See, I'm not going to watch that. I, I'm i not rushing to see Elvis. I don't know if I ever will. But I, this I rushed to was see interesting this, to me. Yeah, well, because the director the Andrew mostly, Dominic. I was going to see it. But, um, the new mm-hmm. Andrew Dominic bomb. I mean, it's a special, it's a special kind of bomb. It really is. Like this is, I would probably watch yeah. this movie again. It's so like batshit insane. I, I have, yeah, I've seen it twice. Yeah. I watched it on Netflix. It's yeah, so I weird. Think I will watch it again. <laughs> Man, I don't know what else to say except like, yeah, it looks great, and the score was really great. <laughs> I'm like, that that was awesome. There's some beauty in this 
kind of weird movie. There's there's parts about it that are so like repetitive that there were points that I got bored, but there would always be some like wacky, crazy decision in the presentation where I'd be like, oh wow, like yeah. it's so and and I'm not saying it was always successful. Some of them I'm like, oh wow, that's really cool. And some of them like I think there was like a sex scene where like her bed turned into a waterfall and she was like huge. I was like, why did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I think like, it's like trying to be faithful to the book. Is that, that might be like that a lot of the weird in the book? <laughs> yeah, well, because there's there's like a book which I haven't yeah, read. Yeah, that's that's how those like fetus scenes hit me. Okay, where I was like, this must yeah. have been something to do with the books, and there's just something lost. Like the stuff in the opening with like yeah, when she's a kid. Mm-hmm. That shit. That was like that's like taken from the book probably because I was watching. There's a mini series based on this also. And that's the same as the book. It's, that, it's all the same shit. Um, yeah, it's like all this stuff in the movie where she has like father issues. Yeah, <laughs> there were some people that were pointing out. I think on Reddit, um, they were saying that her character is like weirdly infantilized, and that wasn't something that I yeah. like immediately really picked up on because like. I don't, I'm not like a huge, I, I don't really know anything about like Marilyn Monroe as a person. I didn't like, I've never yeah, researched what she was like. So this was all just kind of like a blank slate to me. But people were saying like, you know, the the way that they kind of like made her seem kind of like a child in the movie is just like not true to her character. And I, I get that it's like, oh, we're telling a different story. But it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, why is, why is it even, why is it Marilyn Monroe mm. anymore? if you're going to have her change completely. One of the examples that I thought was particularly funny was just her not knowing what spaghetti is. <laughs> She's like, oh, spaghetti? Does he, where's spaghetti from? And it's just, like, that's kind of a, that's, that's kind of a weird thing to put in, in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They make, her, they make her seem, movie. yeah. They kind of make her seem less intelligent than, than she really was. I think she was, like, very smart in real life. Yeah, well, I mean, they were. I, I, I'm just trusting what other people say on this. Like, I have no idea, but there were people saying like, yeah, she was well aware of like the character she was playing into, and she was self aware, and um, yeah, you know, like, I don't I think know. They tried I, to I, do that in the movie. I never met her. I yeah. couldn't tell you what she was like. You don't really get like much of that dichotomy, like explored in the movie. It doesn't, it's, you know, it's way more abstract. It doesn't really seem concerned with even telling she's that just, side of it. <laughs> she's just constantly saying "daddy" to like everybody she meets. Mm. Yeah, like, that's exactly. like the most common thing she says in the movie. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I guess I do have to concede. There's a bunch of aspects where I probably wouldn't have as much issue if it if it uh, wasn't Marilyn Monroe. You know, there's a couple issues where it kind of shoots itself in the foot, like the accent, like trying to figure out why they would even make it a, a based on a person in the first place. But um, I think my in terms of like whether or not the film works overall and what I was entertained by or I guess taken aback by, um, were mostly just the creative decisions. I it 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 was like you said, a huge swing and a miss. Um, just very ambitious, but just didn't fucking work in so many ways for me. And it's it reminds me of Hulk. It reminds me of Southland Tales. It reminds me of Nymphomaniac. <laughs> it reminds me of like I know who killed me. This is this is Andrew Dominic's M Night moment. It's his Snyder moment. You know, like he's just. He's got these decisions, and I love the guy, and his movies are interesting, and I want to see more from him, but, like, maybe he had too much creative freedom here. Maybe maybe he, someone needed to, like, rein him in a bit. I don't know what happened. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I recommend this to everybody. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, I'd recommend to see it, too. <laughs> yeah, I guess where I differ from you guys is, like, I found it just more of a frustrating experience. I, I was... I was almost getting more pissed off by those little flashes of the, the creative kind of like the visuals that were coming in there. Like the, there were clearly ideas and something that wanted to be said, but it was just, it was just getting lost in translation or something. And with that runtime and with the, yeah, you said the accent and just these weird details here and there, these fetuses 
talking and just the craziness. Like it would either have to be more crazy and shorter or actually like communicate some more kind of concrete ideas about this human, <laughs> you know, like as someone who like you doesn't really know much about Marilyn, I, I really don't feel like I have thought much more about her or learn anything about her since watching this. Um, no, it's just really not, really not what I'm after. And, uh, I did actually look up that quote you referenced Ralph and it's pretty, it's pretty funny. Oh, please. Um, yeah. So oh, what, it was the whore? journalist, Christina Newland, who was conducting the interview with Dominic tweeted an outtake from her transcript with the assassination of Jesse James director. Does anyone watch Marilyn Monroe movies? Dominic said before going on to slam gentlemen prefer blondes as a movie about well-dressed whores see below yeah you can read the whole thing on indiewire um <laughs> interesting there you go <laughs> he's clearly got opinions <laughs> all right yeah that's funny oh man all right numbers yeah i don't know if i would watch this one again this would be like a one and a half star for me yeah, but swing and a miss is the way to put it. Damn. Yeah, don't like this one, man. I loved this movie. Two out of ten. <laughs> Damn. The two out of ten. Yeah. It was great. It's one of those. It's like what what you said, Alex, when you, when we saw Climax. It's a it's a Pfizer rating. Mm -hmm. Pfizer rating. This like yeah, defies I can see a number. That. Yeah, I'm just not gonna give it a number. Give it a ten. No, I'm not going to give it a number. <laughs> okay. okay. Did you rate it on Letterboxd, though? <laughs> Just V2. No, okay. I didn't. Oh, okay. Okay, I don't, uh, No, I didn't rate it. I don't, I don't rate everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I veto it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you veto. for sticking to your guns and uh, braving this tumultuous... Uh, environment of the, the discussion of blonde, which everybody was really mad about a month ago, but I think most people have yeah. forgotten about it. Nobody yeah, exactly. It's settled it. down. Hey, yeah. man, you guys made a lot of good points. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of valid uh, criticisms. I mean, yeah, I I get it. I I understand the movie. what there is to like about it. Didn't hit for me, but yeah, I love I love Andrew Dominic. I'm excited to check out Chopper. That's the only one I haven't seen. Yeah, I want to see Chopper. Yeah. I love Jesse James. I love the score of this movie. And some cool ideas. Mm -hmm. Cool cool visuals. I wonder if his next film will be as crazy. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to go harder. I, I wonder what he's going to do next. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want to see him make extremes. another movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's not like oh I'd never want to see one of his movies again. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I want to see him make another movie, just like I see all of M Night's movies. Hell yeah, I can't wait for Gay <laughs> Strangers. Yeah, that's funny. Oh yeah, that looks good. I saw that trailer the other yeah. day. Bros too. <laughs> He's the only one that could actually like sell that though. Like Gay Strangers. Yeah, yeah. you couldn't just release Gay Strangers. Like it has to be an M Night joint, <laughs> and that and people will watch it. Could you, if it wasn't directed by M. Night, no one would watch it. True. I think it'll He's do successful. the guy. type of filmmaking just yeah. carved out. He owns this type of just. <laughs> or maybe it'll he needs to have Jonathan Groff or Groff, whatever. The guy from Mine Hunter. He needs to have him. John Groff. Mm. <laughs> I don't even know his name. All right. Um, we had a film recommendation. It was my turn. I decided to. Make a uh, safe choice with something I've seen before and that I remember enjoying because uh, my boyfriend was in town and there was, you know, I wanted to watch it with him. I didn't want to take a gamble with Death to Smoochie or something. So uh, The Revenant, <laughs> spoiler discussion for The Revenant 2015, directed by Alejandro Gonzalez Inyali 2. Um, it's about Leo DiCaprio. Uh, spoilers, he gets attacked by a bear. And uh, Tom Hardy is uh, tasked with uh, making sure that he uh, dies peacefully and uh, is buried properly. And uh, Tom Hardy gets a little impatient and kills Leo's son. And then it's a revenge movie because Leo gets better. Um, yeah, watch it. It's crazy. 
What do you guys think of it? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I agree with you on that Whoa. one. Pretty painful. Mm-hmm. Like in, in an intend, intended way. <laughs> yeah. Like this, this is arduous. It's like it's just exploring action. pain. <laughs> Fighting for survival, like a true survival kind of tale. Yeah. Seems like he had a lot of money to make it. Yeah. A lot Which of is resources. crazy. I don't know it's if it's... Cool. Um, did you Did you see how over budget it went too, though? Oh, probably a lot. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't see. Him. Yeah, because they were originally going to film it in Alberta, and then I think I told you this before. There was like a uh, like an uncommon weather event. I guess it was called like a Chinook, where like warm weather from somewhere goes in and blah blah blah. It's like an unusually uh, warm season. That's right. I remember you saying. And uh, yeah, here we go. It's on Wiki. Uh, yeah, they had to they had to relocate. Uh, oh. near the Rio Olivia at the tip of Argentina with snow on the ground to shoot the film's ending. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think that boosted the budget. They filmed a bunch of it in Montana as well. But I think it's super fucking cool that they did a, this in like real outdoors and weather and like it, it feels so genuine. Um, God, it has so much. Because the... Like that natural yeah. lighting. Yeah, the lighting and just like the environment itself is so much of a character and it adds to the threat of the film. Like, you know, these scenes would be painful and uh, stressful enough without <laughs> the weather, but you add that layer of like, oh, it's all he's also freezing to death. And you can really tell because <laughs> it's, it's yeah. actually cold where they're filming. Yeah. Um, it, it was kind of like the um, the inverse of, um, I think I mentioned this when we were talking about Brokeback Mountain and like using the environment to like enforce mm. certain like ideas of the story. It is like the inverse of like the the kind of uh, hopeful, kind of um, open and warming, welcoming environment that's in that movie compared to the cold, like <laughs> desolate, uh, just anti-life situation they're in in this movie and like all the way to... I love that shot towards the end where um, the uh, the Irish guy is taken out by Tom Hardy, and there's that just avalanche that's like set off in the in the background. It just like mm. really enhances what the main character is kind of going through, and just you said that there's barely any dialogue, and so much of everything to do with this movie is communicated without words and just relying on those visuals, relying on the grunts and the dirt and the grime to communicate a lot of the story for you. Um, camera that's work one of the things i like about it especially that's yeah, one of the yeah. things i love so much about inyari too is that um there's a real like visceral like in your face expression of the camera and he's not afraid to just like get really low to the ground or like really close to someone's face and like you know he's not afraid of uh like lens flare from the sun, but he doesn't like JJ Abrams it where it's like, Oh, that's the only thing yeah. you're paying attention. Like he's there's, there's something so alive about, uh, the way that he expresses himself visually. Um, th that it, it really just, I, 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 f I feel what he's going for and it, it, it sticks with me, uh, pretty well. I, I gel with it. Uh huh. I like his his uh, style a lot. Well, yeah, it really mm -hmm. enhances different like different types of scenes. Like mm -hmm. the, the the action is very impressive, and you said with about the camera work, uh, you never get lost in how like chaotic things get. Even when it's like towards the end, the that final like showdown with the. Uh, Tom Hardy and oh, yeah. being, like up close. You can really tell what's going on and it never gets confusing or or lost in that kind of handheld camera work. And it's just or well, the bear attack even and just all the choreography and just how kind of wonderful it's pulled off with the the mixture of special effects and the I was thinking about that with the special effects. There's a lot of CG animals in the movie. Um but it, it really works here for me. Um mm -hmm. They, they they just shoot it in the right way. They have it the CG animals interacting with the environment just enough. Yeah, that, that's always the thing to me. Like when the CG creatures, the like dragons of Game of Thrones, whatever, like monsters, these dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Like there's such a kind of 
easy way to do it where you just plot them in the environment, just worry about all the mechanics later. But if you like shoot like this with the wires, with like all this like rehearsing and people in like role playing bears basically in blue suits and all this, like you get such a effective <laughs> result from that. That bear attack scene is the stuff of nightmares. When I saw that for the first time when it came out like that. It's never left me. Like I'll often watch that scene on YouTube. I find it so like so viscerally like horrifying, and it seems like oh, yeah. well researched and yeah, yeah. something about that that grizzly man. It sells the oh, movie. Yeah, that seems great. A lot of people just wanted to mm. see Leo DiCaprio fight a bear. Like that was the whole, <laughs> the whole selling point of the movie is Leo DiCaprio fights a bear. It wasn't even, Leo people didn't know they were bear. seeing like a revenge human revenge story. Like people. It, and p it, people responded well to it, too. Like, it, this is one of the best examples of a film that proves that you can make an art film and a crowd pleaser without sacrificing in either direction, without having to compromise one for the other. Um, there's so many people that believe that uh, if you make an art film with like beautiful cinematography and music and it's performance driven and all this that like it therefore has to be inaccessible to mainstream audiences or that if you make uh, like an action revenge story, uh, you know, where Leo DiCaprio fights a fucking bear that it therefore has to be inaccessible to the art crowd. No, this film is like one of the best examples that you can have both and you don't have to compromise in either direction. Um, that, yeah, that's, that's, it's a really special film in that sense. Um, there's not a huge amount like that. Yeah, there is very little compromise. I was thinking about what you're saying with um, with Prey the other week. With yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's so bullshit. The genuine language use and yeah, subtitles and yeah. not having to worry about that is nice. Makes yeah, it more immersive for sure. And they just like they they hammed everything up in the marketing about like oh it's so authentic and blah, blah, blah. and it's just it's really not <laughs> it's really not and watching prey made me want to watch this again it was it was prey was the film that reminded me like oh yeah i haven't seen the revenant in a while mm. and this was better than i remembered it really i don't know when the last time i saw it was but i i really got like a newfound appreciation especially for the fight choreography and the the scene at the end um, not just in terms of, uh, how believable it was with each action that, uh, Leo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy had with each other in terms of like, they were doing like a really well choreographed dance with each other, but it didn't feel like choreography. It still felt like a genuine struggle. It still felt like two people like actually fighting each other and the way that the camera yeah. moved, mm -hmm. uh, especially when tom hardy gets his fingers chopped off it shows like so little of it but it's just the perfect amount where you can tell what happened but it's not like you know it didn't like go in for a close-up and like ah oh, like it didn't cut mm. even yeah right you can tell it and happened tom hardy's reaction too oh it's yeah like kind of really underplayed and the yeah perfect yeah. way to communicate that just so it's like you get to experience that same shock as an audience member like holy shit that just happened rather than the film manipulating you as it, or obviously manipulating you into uh, trying to showcase it or something. It was the perfect amount where any more subtly, you might not even tell that it happened and any uh, less subtly, it might've felt like gratuitous or manipulative. Yeah. It was, it was so perfect. I loved it so much. Yeah. Good action. <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it, with the the bear as well, like one of the huge selling points in terms of the believability of how, you know, it's a CG bear, 2015 CG bear. Not only does it look better in terms of like a functioning model and the animation than Prey uh, or other films since, <laughs> since The Revenant, um, but the way that it's used, it's not just like in Prey, the way that it's used in that film is you have one shot of the bear, <laughs> then you cut and you see one shot of this uh, woman who's obviously an actor pretending to look at, and the director is being like, just pretend like you're being re reacting to a bear. She goes, oh, there's a bear in front of me. And then he cut back to the bear. It's fighting a CG predator or whatever. Like, I guess the guy was in a suit. But like, 
it just it never felt like it interacted with anything in the environment whereas in this film it's picking up Leo, like it's it's grabbing at his back and like clawing him and like throwing him around and the way that that functions in the film like i don't have a fucking clue exactly what they were doing to achieve that effect of of him being tossed around like i'm sure i could watch the special features or hear him in the commentary uh they maybe they had like just some big strong guys in like green green outfits like throwing him around or like maybe he was attached to like uh a lever mechanism wires. or something or yes. like wires, I believe, I, yeah wires or yeah it doesn't matter it what they out. did the fact that it's not like so obviously apparent the fact that you don't see through the illusion right away and you're seeing the bear do it mm. like it doesn't matter if it if, if it's not like hyper realistic this perfect whatever they were trying to sell us in lion king 2019 promotional material where it's like oh it's real it doesn't <laughs> matter because it's real for the film it's real for the film's universe it's real in that environment and how we see it and so yeah it's i it's it's awesome it's perfect I love looks it. great yeah for 20 yeah. fucking 15 like holy shit it aged beautifully. <laughs> I thought that it would have looked worse, but it's just it's. Yeah. I thought it looked great. I don't know if it looks. I don't know if it looks real. I thought no, it I thought looked it looked great. Awesome. Yeah, the bear looks great. It was funny what you were saying. Like people thought the movie was about the bear. Leo, yeah, like when it came out, I thought like the movie was about like Leo get revenge on that freaking bear. Yeah, I'm gonna he's kill like, that the fucking whole movie. He's like, he's like, I'm gonna kill that fucking bear. <laughs> That bear, that bear took everything. Yeah, <laughs> he fucked me up in the trailer. I gotta get revenge on him. <laughs> yeah, that's like the whole movie. Um, but no, it's about like yeah, this whole Tom Hardy character. He's like the driving force of the story, and mm-hmm. you know, there's more action from there. And yeah, Tom Hardy's great in this movie. He, he really he's is my favorite performance in my in the in the whole movie, in my opinion, anyway. He did a great like job with Leo. the accent. Too. <laughs> like he oh, was yeah, super yeah, he consistent he with it. Like this is really a great performance movie somehow with like such little dialogue. And it's just like a revenge story. That's also like kind of a popcorn movie to a lot of people. It's like brutal and intense yeah. and gory, almost like a horror film, but it's also like a, it's a really great performance movie somehow. Yeah. Well, he's like, you, you feel for him too. Cause you know, he's just like this poor guy. He's trying to, he knows this guy's going to die. So he's just trying to get rid of him. You understand him. <laughs> he is a bad guy, but he is a bad I guy. love that his motivations are clear and you can understand that there could yeah. be a person that feels justified in that way. Like you don't have to Especially at that time. He's not just haha, I'm yeah. a villain and I'm bad because I like being yeah. bad. Like he he's feels, like a product of the environment. Yeah. yeah. Like he's yeah. he's looking out for himself. He's l- interested in self preservation. He let his paranoia over thinking like well, I'm being put in a more dangerous situation because of this i need to look after myself sort of thing like you can understand why he did what he did you know he stabbed his son when he started mm-hmm. yelling like you know he's he's a villain he's he's a bad guy but at the same time you you can understand why it makes sense for him and he justifies it in his own mind um mm-hmm. yeah he's not a poorly written villain at all it's a very well well written character justification I do mm-hmm. find the um, inspired by true events tagline to be quite funny, though. Like oh, did it? I don't even thing. remember. It's an inspired. Yeah, yeah. If you look like oh, on God, the poster, it like an IMDb, <laughs> it, it does say like it's but because it's like like the the DiCaprio, the Hugh Glass, like that was like a real person apparently, and he did survive. Oh, yeah. a but it's like attack, a folklore um, thing. Yeah, and it was like it wasn't in like the snowy environment. It was like somewhere completely different. It, it wasn't like a revenge thing in the same yeah. way. Yeah, like, just crawled like for like two hundred miles, like or something. Um, it wasn't <laughs> this huge like epic tale of revenge and oh like, yeah, the sun and all that that angle. <laughs> it's yeah, very much exaggerating like that kind of folk story and making it much more of like a an epic, for lack of a better oh, word. Yeah. That's really funny. You're like none of that shit happen. Yeah, because that's such that it's like such a joke that even like d- didn't Fargo like parody it with its tagline? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, Fargo it's says it's based on a true story. Yeah, like it's it's beyond parody that kind of stuff at this point. But I don't know. It's not really like I'm sat there thinking about that while watching the movie. It's just funny that they advertised it based on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does that even like sell tickets? Or are people just doing it because they think it, it must that it do because like there's 
a bunch of movies do it. Like there was that alien like abduction movie that did it. I feel like it just it gives off this air of like legitimacy. Like it's something that 127 hours, like stuff like that, where it's like this was like real mm. and then watch the real struggle be overcome. But it's more epic because it's big was screen. Real. Yeah, I guess that yeah. kind of is the implication. Mm. It's a real struggle. <laughs> yeah. I fucking I love the look of this film. I love the colors of this film. You know, there's certain shots where mm-hmm. um you know, like in the interior in the bar like everything's this kind of like really orange lighting cuz it's all natural light from the flames of the candles and then it like goes into the outside and it's a really like soft like cold blue and it's just Mm. Everything's just so mm. well communicated visually in this film. I love it. There's mm. um, the only real issue I have with this movie at this point is like there's some dubbing at points and I don't know why. <laughs> there's like some lines yeah, that are like very clearly so. dubbed and I don't understand why they were because it seems like especially for the budget that they had <laughs> um, that there's no reason why it should feel dubbed. So it's like, is that a choice? And I, if it is a choice, then like, maybe I should listen to the commentary. Like, is, is he going to say why that he did that? Like, that's really my only issue with it. Um, hmm. All right. I didn't really see, I didn't really notice that. It's like, it, there's a couple lines. Yeah. That's a couple you know. of times. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's very weird. So, mm. uh, here's a fun fact. Uh, <laughs> uh, because of the uh, reshoots, uh, let's see. Principal t- photography for The Resident began in October 2014. A planned two-week break from filming in December was extended to six weeks, which forced Tom Hardy to drop out of Suicide Squad. <laughs> so, yeah, dodged a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> really? Because, like, I, um, I didn't... I didn't know Tom Hardy was supposed to be in Suicide Suicide Squad, but I had always watched Suicide Squad. Yeah, he was supposed to be Boomerang Man. Mm-hmm. Is that the guy that looks like Tom Hardy? Because that yes. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. what I was about to say. When I watched Suicide Squad, I always thought, "Oh, this is just discount Tom Hardy." They just got someone Jai who Courtney, looks like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jai Courtney. Yeah, yeah, no, literally yeah. is. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> that makes that makes even more sense now. That's amazing. Uh huh. Everything's in its right place. Yeah, literally dodged a bullet. Um, <laughs> the uh, soundtrack, I think, is fucking incredible. I love the music in this film. It's very um, interesting. Well, here's the thing is, like, a lot of films set in older times, they have this... You're You're tasked with this challenge of trying to decide how dated your soundtrack should be. Um, and Mm -hmm. you know, there's examples like Elvis where it's like, okay, the movie's even about the music and they're doing like new remixes of like songs. Like that can like (laughs) take someone out of the movie. Um, and so you don't want it like, you don't want it to be too modernistic if you're trying to get someone in the time period. But then if you're only working with, uh, older sounds, then you run the risk of it just sounding like cliched or like stereotypical, or recycled like this has been done before. I felt like the soundtrack was this perfect blend of of old sounds, but like through a modern lens where mm. it, it was like, it wasn't like a digital sound, but it was like kind of a, how do I describe it? Like they, they took real instruments and then gave this like echoey kind of like filter, uh, this like really soft way of expressing it where it's like okay well i haven't heard anything like this explicitly before so it gives it kind of a modern feel but without without making it sound like weird like specific to a time period if that makes sense it's it's so Mm -hmm. difficult to describe but there's something about it that i just absolutely love the main theme especially a couple composers didn't work Mm -hmm. so it's not just one voice so that yeah um maybe it's something to do with that that combination of the different styles because i was noticing that with that kind of uh, electronics not really the right word but it yeah. kind of is you can tell it's like more modern sounds but it doesn't distract from the visuals like it complements it weirdly yeah it's really gonna, unique for that i'm gonna listen to it right now just to refresh myself 
Oh yeah. And there's like there's a wind sound in the soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of diegetic. Oh thing man. Going. Oh, I love it so much. And there's so much space in between the notes to like mm. really absorb each chord, each uh chord change. And you're kind of just like left there and it's this really like desolate empty feeling before it like picks back up again it almost holds mm. for like too long in kind of an unexpected way that it's just it's so perfect i love the soundtrack yeah it's perfectly used too like um oh yeah and it builds and when, when it's not used too yeah like there's there's not a, there's not a note played during that whole like bear sequence or through a lot of the action so yeah true really emphasizes it just at the right moments Oh, I love it. I want to watch this movie again, like, right now. I watched it, like, fucking a week or two ago, or whenever I recommended it. Is it the, yeah, so, this is uh, this is a film I really love, for sure. It's, uh, I can understand some aspects of, uh, you know, some people might be like, oh, that part's a little cheesy, or that shouldn't have happened. Like, I felt like inklings of that, but I was always, you know, aside from the uh, weird dubbing, I felt like on this watch, I could find easy ways to justify certain things. Like, um, you know, near the end fight scene, he uh, falls, chases him down the hill or whatever, his gun falls. And I think maybe the first time I watched it, I can't remember, but like, I probably would have thought like, oh, just go back and get your gun. Like, you can climb up there. Like, you need the gun sort of thing. Um, Mm -hmm. But this time I watched it, I felt like it almost kind of makes sense that um, he would just chase after him because A, he doesn't want him to get away. He doesn't want to risk like, oh, I'm going to have to, you know, if if I have to climb up this thing to get my gun again, I you know, I don't want him disappearing on me. But B, I think that Leo DiCaprio's character probably took that as a moment of like, you know what, this is like a sign that I sh- that I get to kill him with my bare hands like i think he really wanted to do it with his bare hands Mm -hmm. too like i think at that point he was like no yeah i'm fucking i want to like feel killing this man i don't want it to be like impersonal with like a gunshot wound (laughs) sort of thing um so i think that that kind of justifies it in a way too um yeah there's a couple things like that where I felt like I was able to justify it more on this one. Well, how do you feel about the overall pacing and kind of the flow? Um, Cause that was the one thing I remembered. I haven't seen it probably since 2015. <clears throat> and one of my memories was, yeah, I remember that being quite long, despite how good it was. I remembered that feeling. Um, and uh, for the most part, I was kind of surprised by how, how brief it does feel, how quick it does flow. But for me, there is a space kind of like right in the middle, right in mm-hmm. the middle of that second act that is mostly Leo kind of crawling around surviving. I love I do it. start to feel the, but that's the thing. Yeah. It is like an intentional thing. It's like the whole point of the piece is, is to be arduous is to be there with the pain. Yeah. With each, like you want tiny, to suffer a bit with him. success he gets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I, I do feel that at a certain point. Um, Cause I, the, the the first and like last act I'd like really love like the way those um are pulled off and the way it all comes together but there are points uh, in that middle where it's mm-hmm. yeah I was kind of waiting for someone mm. to move on for a different type of scene to to unfold especially because that Tom Hardy character is so good you want to see oh yeah I personally wanted to see him doing as much as possible oh man I just I True. think it flows so great <laughs> but I totally understand what you're saying I I could imagine feeling that way but I don't. I think I'm just so I I like Inyaritu's films a lot more than the average person. I feel like the way he expresses himself connects a lot more with me than a lot of other people. Um mm. and I'm not saying like oh mainstream audiences like even a bunch of, you know, Criterion heads and other people are just like not as into him. Yeah, a lot of people a lot of people like his movies. A lot of people like his movies, but <laughs> Yeah, not, a lot of people like his movies. So I don't know what you mean. I mean a lot of his movies are successful in a way that 
most people who watch it don't even know it's him. <laughs> you know, like this movie was successful because of the like mm. uh, the stars, yeah, like Leo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy. It, I know, but yeah, a lot of people a watch thing. this without even like comprehending who the director is. There's some people that are like you know huge film buffs that think that he's kind of a hack, which is interesting. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't think so. Oh man, I just I think he's like so incredibly talented. I don't know who these people are. <laughs> who who yeah, these people, people that you're talking to? <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna name drop them, yeah. but they're people that we respect. People, who's, people think he's a hack. I'm not gonna, yeah, his movies I'm not are gonna great. name drop them. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I love his movies. His movies are great. This is not a bad movie. None of his movies are bad. Bardo's got mixed reviews. I loved every movie I've seen. Yeah, I was gonna ask about oh. Bardo if you guys have seen it yet. More is like that the Bardo. newest one he made? Um, yeah, so he's got one coming out on Netflix in December. It might have uh, a theatrical release before that, actually. Uh, but it's called Bardo False Chronicle ha- of a Handful of Truths. It's got a 52 meta score, 7.5 IMDb user rating. Um, meta score not too far off of what uh, Blonde was, but I will say that uh, <laughs> this isn't his first. Uh, kind of polarizing film as the same thing happened essentially with his film Beautiful starring Javier Bardem Mm. Um, and Mm -hmm. I quite liked that movie a lot Mm -hmm. I I really love that Mm. movie so I don't know maybe this maybe this will be his first film that I don't love we'll see but I'm you know I love him enough that I'm gonna watch it Mm. I think it's on Netflix later I think Netflix is distributing it but I have no idea. I have no idea what it's about. I'm just going to keep myself blind to it. So yeah, he directed a uh, like a VR movie in 2017. VR yeah, movie. and I I don't know how to ever watch it. It was like it it was a special VR installation at Con in 2017, and I want to watch it, and I don't know if it will ever be released anywhere I'm like just fucking release it on steam bro it's <laughs> yeah, like seven minutes long somewhere. yeah steam me bro oh my god let me just let me watch it on my fucking telephone you know <laughs> legit i'm gonna get i'm gonna give him a piece of my mind next time i see my best friend alejandro drove <laughs> g in <laughs> yari too alejandro in the e2 yeah it's funny because uh, he's done so many collaborations with Gustavo Santo Alalala, and I have a, tr- mm. a lot of trouble with his name too. But who? Um, <laughs> Gust- the Santola. composer for The Last of Us and oh. uh, okay. other films we've Santola. talked about, yeah, Amores Peros, and uh, what was the- we talked about one recently that broke back? Oh. Broke back. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Great composer. Oh. Um, yeah. The Revenant, man. I I am ecstatic about this movie just because it, it was so much better than I remembered. And I feel like I was just able to. It was better than this. you remembered. It is. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it even more. I found myself. Uh, forgiving a lot of things that I might have been like cynical about when I first watched it. I was mm. more open to it this time. Mm. Maybe it's because I watched it with my boyfriend. Maybe I'm not going to be shitting on movies anymore. <laughs> Maybe I'm just going to enjoy everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's fuck. good. That's my good. channel's ruined. Happily ever after. Yeah, oh, very shit. nice. Yeah. So I think, I think I lean a little bit more to, to Birdman. As oh, far yeah. It's like what I really want. Um, from this that director. one needs a 4K, but I do, I yeah, it does. But I just like, I do like how they're basically totally inverse of each other. Like one is super dialogue heavy, and it's just all about oh, yeah. like what the characters are saying nonstop. And then this is like, yeah, the total inverse, like the <laughs> crawling through misery <laughs> yeah, and in pain, spitting, like, without saying shit. <laughs> There's yeah, so much so saliva and just like mucus, like coming out of people's noses and shit throughout <laughs> this movie. And it's like so, I love it. <laughs> It's so visceral. Oh, no, I do. I do like so that honest. about this, this movie. The reminder of like, like just the, the suffering for your art, the whole thing. You know, well, that, that mm. bugs me in so many movies when you can see like 
like I, I know this is great like you're all on set drinking your coffee you're having a great time you go to your trailer like right after mm. a shoot or whatever it's like all, all fun and games and you can see it on the screen and like all these comedies or whatever but then you see this just like thinking about the crew like in the in that mm -hmm. environment and but but it, it it's not just for nothing it does it does really affect the end product it's like a stalker type yeah. thing where like that that becomes a story in and of itself and like the fact that they did sacrifice so much to get it made like it is evident on the screen that, that it does set it apart mm -hmm. most of the movies yeah outside like in the forest yeah, yeah. it's probably brutal to shoot yeah yeah mostly long like takes. exteriors of yeah in a uh -huh. forest <laughs> yeah really long takes oh yeah but it's so beautiful that yeah I, I i love the movie too sorry did you give your rating i didn't give my rating but i did just find out right now that uh his his vr movie won a special achievement award at the oscars <laughs> oh <laughs> is what i'm finding wow. yeah he won, one special of his four oscars was for the vr movie <laughs> really i didn't know that was a special achievement oh. that no one can <laughs> watch that anymore. Was. <laughs> i gotta find out how to watch uh -huh. this shit God damn it. Only the most elaborate VR setups. Carne y arena. Arena. I don't know. <laughs> Fucking God. Sounds great. In parentheses, virtually present, physically invisible. Yeah, stick to films, Alejandro. It's a film? <laughs> stick to films I could watch on my TV. I mean, you should be. I wish you could just watch it. You, VR can... If you can watch it on your phone, you should be able to watch it on your TV, in my opinion. Yeah, or uh, on my fucking telephone. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's like 360 video you can watch on your phone that's like a VR <laughs> thing on YouTube. My fucking telephone. Oh, my God. Who made that awesome video? Mm. There was a YouTuber that made like a 360 video, and it was like a review also, and it was... I tweeted about it like within the past couple months, but it was awesome. I forget who it is. They were awesome. They were, what were they reviewing? Well, they were kind of talking about uh, aspect ratios and like the medium of like experiencing films. And they were saying a lot about uh, like VR. Let's see if I can find it actually because it was dope. Um, you know what's great about my Twitter is like I can actually scroll down to like a few months ago. <laughs> Because I don't tweet, like, every fucking second. Oh, right, yeah. No, whenever I find one of those accounts where oh, like, yeah. you actually can't scroll enough to go past one day's worth of tweets, that's yeah. when you know you found a, a juicy one. Fucking deranged people. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, not a good sign. Yeah, let's see if I can find it. Hold on. Video. Control. F video. I swear I put the word video in my tweet. It might be from earlier than a few months ago. I've almost got it, I think. Nope. Can't figure it out. <gasps> Whatever. Somebody will remind me in the comment section. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, Shit. I... Uh, I want to hear it because you guys are not as warm on this film as I am, which is fine. Um... But I want to hear. I want to hear a bit more about uh, that. Like, what are your biggest issues with this? Or I mean, even, yeah, even if you don't the, have a strong. It's issue. mostly that. It's mostly the pacing for me. It's mostly. I just feel like ten, fifteen minutes, maybe, maybe just. I could do without, um, and it would like sit perfectly for me. Um, but outside of that, there really is. Uh, there's really nothing that particularly bothers me about the movie um it's just yeah are you, is this one of those for you we can like just put on at any point and just revel in the uh the misery i feel like i could, I could watch it again like right now yeah mm. i love the movie i don't i understand like i get like a lot of people are just like they don't want to feel bad i don't think that this is like a bleak like hopeless movie like it's emotional it's brutal um but i don't feel like it would like ruin my day i feel like it, it's a something i can watch and just like appreciate really mm. 
Yeah, I do find it quite bleak, to be honest, um, and kind of exhausting. Yeah, I do as well. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's like, that's the point yeah. of it, you know? Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I think there is a bleakness, especially in that the revenge angle, like the, and you know, it's like so many stories explore the like futility of revenge and that, that kind of angle. Um, mm. And the way that resonates is like a, a dour note for it to kind of end on, but... Yeah, that's not even my thing either, because I, I, I do enjoy like those kind of ruthless movies as well. But um, I don't know, I, I guess it's something to do with the, the environment and it being in like the frontier and the kind of Western kind of ideas. There's just like other other areas it can slide into that would interest me specifically more so than the the pure survival like environment like setting. Um but that's not to say I don't like it, though. I, I do really enjoy the movie. I think it's unique and well made. You know, I don't know. Is it like the the visuals, especially? It's just one of those movies that like kind of just sits in my head with like a like a stalker, like a Blade Runner twenty forty nine type movie where the it is doing something very unique, very visually memorable. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah, I don't have much bad to say about it. I think everything about it's great. Leo is great. Looks great. <laughs> like everything we said, the music's great. I love it too. I'm not negative on it. All right. 10 out of 10 for me. It used to be a 9, but I was like, am I really just going to let some of those like weird dubbing parts? Like, I feel like enough time has passed where I feel so strongly positive about this movie, like after this rewatch that, um, yeah, it's, it's a classic for me. I could watch it at any point in time. Again, I could watch it right now. So damn, love it. Yeah. I'm just a smidge below. Um, I give it like a four star, an eight out of 10, mm -hmm. really solid. Um, yeah, good exploration of just just surviving in a in a horrible, oppressive environment. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna go four and a half star. Good one. <laughs> and if anybody can help me figure out who that fucking reviewer is, they made like an animated. They have like an animated character, and the video started out, and it was like a 360 thing on your phone. Or in your VR headset, it was like a 360 video, and it was a really great video. But I don't remember what they're called, and I don't know why I can't find it on my timeline or my favorites list right now. I must have I must have majorly screwed up, or it was a dream, and the video is not real. But I think the video is real. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that's like a weird feature on YouTube, that like 3D VR type thing. I've used it a couple times, but mm -hmm. yeah, I just totally forgot about that. Yeah. They know it's still on. They turn that feature off. Like no, the they just turned community. off community subtitles because yeah. they hate deaf people, and they turned off yeah. annotations because they don't want you to be able to issue corrections without uploading an entire new video. They just turned off yeah. other features that <laughs> are good. Yeah, like the dislike bar. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you. That's that. Uh, question time. Okay, let's do some questions Question from the Sir Donacos community. Head over to the suggestion thread where you can ask us anything you feel like. Just like Joe RCK did, who, uh, <laughs> I don't know what it was about this one that really jumped out at me, because um, it's, it's really not about uh, movies necessarily. When was the last time you remember being scammed out of a sum of money? <laughs> you guys ever been scammed before? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, I, I was scammed mm. semi recently. I had to like get all my cards changed and do all the bank account stuff. Oh, God, it was so goddamn annoying. Every time, well, no, not every time, but every time I, I was about to say every time I go to America, but it's not true. Every time <laughs> I've been scammed, it's after I've gone to America, though. In terms of every time my credit card information has been stolen, it's been after a trip to the States. Um, just to like ATMs or something. Well, so there's this crazy thing that when it comes to currency and like methods of payment, 
America in terms of like restaurants and businesses is weirdly far behind and I don't know why. Um, so in Canada and I think most first world countries, uh, you go to a restaurant, the bill comes, they bring you a portable machine, you stick your credit card into it, you press some buttons, it calculates the tip for you or whatever if you tip, if you're in one of those countries. And then you take your card, they take back the machine, they can print on out the receipt. In the United States, although that is starting to happen at some places, the the most common method is they take your credit card and disappear somewhere where you can't see them. And then come back. Wait, really? Yeah. <laughs> and they and then they come back oh, yeah. and then they bring you the bill and a pen and you have to do the math of figuring out how much to tip them and then s- write it in and then sign it and then they charge that amount on your credit card after. And you know, you go to a certain amount of restaurants like I don't know that employee. I don't know what they're doing with my credit card. I like the I, I like the non-American way where it never <laughs> leaves my sight and they don't just go somewhere and bring it back to me. You know? Cuz they yeah, could just be that copying like that information. Risk. <laughs> it sounds yeah. like yeah, it's I don't know what it is with the United States. I remember when I was um working at uh, HMV when uh the chips were a new thing, like the chip reader where you stick it into the machine. Mm-hmm. Um and people were having difficulty with, you know, transitioning to that. It would be like, oh, you got to leave it in, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it took like another like five plus years to start seeing that in the States. It was really weird. I don't know what it is about American uh, currency stuff, but. Do they not have like contactless everywhere? Uh, yeah, but not if you're at a restaurant or like a bar, you know, you're at your table. Uh, they don't bring in the majority of places in the States, they don't bring like a portable machine that you can tap on. They just take your credit card and then br- bring you back a piece of paper and a pen <laughs> to sign. This sounds like crazy town. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited for like 10 years from now when that doesn't happen. I'm very excited. But yeah, it seems like every time my, my credit card info has been stolen has been after a trip to the States. <laughs> Whoa! Have you heard uh, one of these scammers fuck with you, Ralph? No, ATM or something? I haven't. Not really. Not like that. I guess I've had stories, but yeah, not that bad. Yeah, my credit card. Yeah, I constantly been get like the um. Oh, it's such a such a bull leg, like, and then they have your info, so then they'll keep trying in other in other ways. Um, oh, like. Yeah, the, the one at the moment I keep getting is like random texts from like people claiming to be the government saying that like, oh, you can claim this and that for like your oh, yeah. energy yeah. bill in the cost of living crisis. And like, yeah, it's, they're just all they're just like praying. Everyone gets basically. spam texts now. That's like a huge mm-hmm. thing everywhere. So yeah, you gotta annoying. ignore them. Spam texts, spam calls. In Vancouver, mm-hmm. basically, uh, you get a spam call and you pick up the phone. And it'll be a pre-recorded message in Mandarin, and then you just know that it's a spam call. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I've been trying. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's a huge Mandarin-speaking population in Vancouver, so you might as well, you know, go. True, with true. But I have gotten some English ones where it's like, "This is the government of Canada. You owe. We're going to send you to jail if you don't." <laughs> <laughs> like, like, no. Oh. <laughs> I know I'm paying my So you never got one of the real up. people ones where they like try and like break you down and like trick you into sending like a lump um, sum over. I don't know if I have. Bank. So you've gotten like an aggressive like. I've had a few of those where oh, it's yeah. like, yeah, someone impersonating a bank. Um, they know you or at least have made some kind of educated guess that you're with this certain branch or whatever. They just keep asking you questions and getting you to like do these verification checks and just try and bamboozle you into just like sending money to some random account. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess it mostly they just like prey on old people basically who don't understand like technology and security checks and things. I so there's um, there's like a government 
uh, s- uh, system for uh, like gas, basically, like ho- in a home for like heating and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. And someone came to my door, like in person, and they were like wearing a pin of that uh, same company. And uh, they were trying to not even convince, they were just saying as if it was like something that like needed to be done to like change it over to this like other system or whatever. And my dad just happened to be visiting from out of town and hearing like just in the doorway or whatever. Um, and he immediately recognized it as a scam because he's, uh, he's worked in like the natural gas industry. And so he's like super familiar with all that shit. And he was mm. like, 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 yeah, they weren't supposed to be wearing that pin of that comp- That was for someone from the other company trying to get you to sign up with them. That was tricking you into thinking you needed to when they're just going to charge you higher rates. And they're just, I guess, going door to door, pretending to be a company from the government, uh, or pretending to be an employee from the government company. I can't, I don't fully understand it, but I was kind what of just hell? like, <laughs> damn, if my dad wasn't, didn't just happen to be visiting me that week or be listening in the doorway there, like I might have like just gotten absolutely fucking boned. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah, and apparently that, it's just like that, a popular yeah, scam. Malicious. Yeah. That he was familiar with. They're like dressing up. They're like doing the hitman strategy. They're just like, just yeah, like pretending they were working for another company. <laughs> what the fuck? Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's fucked a, up. An aggressive strategy. Yeah, yeah, he just like immediately disappeared when my dad was asked. Started asking him like questions. Ugh. He just like don't like he that. He just walked away. Like holy shit. That's fucked. Uh, yeah, it's sad to think about. Well, here's another one that's sad to think about, to be honest, from uh, Bablio2. What's the documentary or a documentary where you fundamentally disagree with the perspective of the documentary slash its filmmakers? Um, I've got an example if you guys want to think for a minute. Sure. What's what's yours? Um, So the other night I checked out this, like... uh, controversial documentary um what is a woman by matt oh did you you actually watched it yeah yeah i watched the whole thing um (laughs) oh god is it even entertaining fucking (laughs) bad faith i feel like you'll just get frustrated to be honest of course because it's like yeah it's so like bad faith and it's just like you're you're Uh posing this question but then when you're getting answers you're like editing it in a way where you're obscuring what the people are saying. So you're not even like presenting the other side in like a fair way, really. No. And it's just like, it's just like, it's just dunks. It's just like a dunkumentary more than a. That's a funny. You know, it's just like an word owning, for it. owning the lib documentary. Yeah. Oh, that's it's, so funny. It, it's really fucking lame. Dunkumentary. Joe Rogan loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did. He's a folk yeah. critic, yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those where it's like being spread around. It's got like really high reviews on like these sites for whatever reason. Um, but that was, yeah. Sites. I, I haven't seen a documentary that, yeah, like on IMDb, it's got like a really high score on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. It's got, oh, like, well, those, really those high don't matter. <laughs> yeah, <those laughs> yeah don't matter. exactly. It was, <laughs> yeah, just really bad faith. It was, it was frustrating as hell to watch. It's like, you're supposed to be, like take the documentary and use it to like explore some kind of idea or at least you know look at both sides a little bit but instead of concluding everything first like at least give it just give it give it a little just a little bit matt walsh <laughs> yeah did you see him uh he was invited onto joe rogan recently and he got fact checked <laughs> Because he was saying like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, the- like <laughs> millions of kids, I believe, are like uh, going on, uh, like getting surgeries or under this uh, therapy or whatever. <laughs> and it turns surgeries. out it was like a hundred per year or something. It was like nowhere yeah, close like to thousand. millions. So and he was like, it was like yeah. A, yeah. But he, he's like, he that was his honest version of like either A, what he thought it was, or B, him trying to fear monger. Either way, like... It wouldn't be that big of a deal if it's just like any Republican, you know, talking head, whatever. But the fact that he, like, you made a documentary about 
trans people basically <laughs> right like you you should yeah hopefully be familiar enough with the subject if you're doing if you're presenting an honest uh material out to the world if you're if you're at all concerned about any sort of integrity with your information or whether or not you have like trying to challenge your own perspective maybe or whether or not you have like facts on your side like if if you're getting these things wrong and you made a documentary about the subject that's pretty bad i'd also like to point out um i haven't seen the documentary yet but uh, I don't know if I will. I, it's <laughs> who knows. It might be. It might be something fun to go over, but it might not. Um, I would like to point out that the exercise of bad faith can be examined already in the title of the film because uh, the Republican True. talking point <laughs> around yeah. trans people is very, very, very focused on trans women and not as focused on trans men. Um, mm -hmm. and part of the reason for that is if you think about it, like if he made a documentary called what is a man, we'd already know like that it would be filled with all of these like social expectations, right? Like Republicans have been saying this shit forever. Like you're not a real man. If you don't do this, like that has nothing to do with like genitals. You'll be, you'll be like, if you don't provide for your family, you don't have a real man. If you don't have a beard, you're not a real man. Like all these things. It's like, okay, well the, you know, if you were asking that question and not what is a woman, then you'd get a lot of different answers from people. And it would be like, oh, these are a lot of social, uh, you know, presentation sort of ideas, not necessarily like chromosomes, right? What is mm -hmm. a man has been something that Repu like conservatives have always been talking about. And it's always been a social thing. So the fact that they're asking what is a woman and not what is a man, uh, it like that's intentional yeah no it's just leaning into culture war yeah just inflammatory shit basically yeah um, yeah dumb terrible which is funny because that like that also kind of provides like a little lens into how they feel about women it's like oh it's it's the genitals mm -hmm. a woman is just her genitals <laughs> like okay yeah, that's really all a woman is perfect way to yeah a yeah. woman is just just the genitals that's it okay yeah. if you want to admit <laughs> that publicly okay. Okay. yeah um it's really like smug as well that was oh yeah thing that was bugging me about it yeah uh -huh. oh, sure well he does this thing where he present like i don't know if you've watched any of his stuff outside of the documentary but like he does this thing where he uh he always has this sort of smug attitude and he presents himself in a way where he is always kind of being like a bit sarcastic in how he presents himself yeah but he's not doing like this isn't like stephen colbert where it's like okay i'm parodying the opposite of my beliefs he's being sarcastic while maintaining his same set of beliefs so that every time he says something monumentally stupid, he just goes like, well, I was being sarcastic. And he just continues playing along in that way. So, like, th that happened with the uh, the Little Mermaid thing where he was like, well, yeah, you can't, you know, like, someone underwater, you wouldn't, you would, would actually make more sense if they were translucent and blah, blah, blah. And then he got heat for it. And then he just, he doubled down and went more sarcastic. He's like, you were stupid for believing there was anything sincere about it. It's yeah, like, okay, well, you're not. just a joke defense. Yeah, yeah. like, what what does that mean when a when your parody is your beliefs still like where it's just like oh but you're just saying like the conservative talking point i forget the most recent one that happened with it was uh oh yeah where he, he said i think he said anime is demonic and then he got called out <laughs> for it and then sure enough he like posts a tweet that's like more sarcastic so he's like oh this is obviously a joke and you can't you can't dunk on me because i was just being sarcastic the whole time it's like tommy Wiseau saying that the room was supposed to be a comedy you know <laughs> or it's like yeah it okay if you want it to be that's cool but it didn't didn't really seem like you were trying to do that you can you're kind of just like looks like you're just trying not to take the l right now like you're trying to save face because you're insecure yeah it just makes your position look weak yeah mm. Yeah, very, very cringy. There was a documentary that I don't remember who in my household rented, but it was, uh, you know, a DVD from the movie studio in Edmonton. And uh, I think it was called What the Bleep Do We Know? 
And I kind of just like, this was before I was critical about the information that I was receiving. And I had just assumed yeah. because I was at such a young age that if I was watching something in a documentary, then it must be true. Um, but now I'm older and I realize mm -hmm. that like, you know, people who create things, people who write books, <laughs> you know, are also very flawed and you can't really trust them without a good reason to. And you should be skeptical of the information that you receive from anybody. Uh, so it was making all these crazy, weird, like, um, like new age, like, uh, claims about like, oh, the molecules of water, if you, you know, you put the same water into like four different bottles and there was a monk and he was thinking really angry thoughts at one bottle of water. He was thinking really happy thoughts about the other bottle of water. <laughs> and then they examined the molecules and it was a different structure. So there's a, like, you, your feelings can like change reality, bro. And it's like, they sprinkled in like enough truths in the documentary to make it seem like it had some sort of scientific backing but then it's like okay when you really examine it a lot of it's just bullshit what were they trying <laughs> to sell with that like what what you know they were just like, trying to sell the... like the whole like it so there's another documentary called the secret and basically the entire thing is like if you think it it will materialize in real life and it's not a, like there's a lot of people that are really drawn to this uh let's call it a wishful thinking delusion. Um, you can see this idea present in most religions. That's what prayer is, is like, oh, if you think something enough, it'll happen. Um, I think people mm -hmm. are drawn towards that idea because it is like a nice thing that, you know, if it existed, that would be nice. Uh, but then it, it unintentionally kind of makes this weird thing where it's like, oh yeah, the starving kids in Africa didn't want it hard enough or, you know, like, oh yeah, they just didn't, yeah. they didn't like materialize, they, they didn't visualize it hard enough. Like, yeah, it, it opens the door to a lot of like, okay, wait, that's a really fucked up way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, I think people want to feel as though they have like more of an influence on the universe and that they're more connected and that there's like a, objective sense of like good and bad and cosmic karmic justice or whatever so, mm, there's something greater than you, yeah, yeah it's it's a tempting thought but it just doesn't hold up was it actually called like going back to the other was it actually called what the bleep what it's the like bleep do we out. know it was the word bleep is in the title <laughs> yeah. what the bleep do we know so it's not what the bleep down the rabbit hole. I mean, they might have the changed sequel? the title. I think that's the first one, actually. Mm. What oh, the bleep? Okay. No, wait. What the bleep down the rabbit hole is the sequel, I think. I think what oh, the yeah, bleep yeah. do we know is the first one. And where the fuck... Oh, we, oh it's 2004. It. Wow. I was like 13. No shit, oh I did. The, um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the description is hilarious. A fictional photographer's quest to spiritually <laughs> rediscover herself is interspersed with documentary footage of scientists and theologians discussing <laughs> discussing the philosophical aspects of quantum physics. <laughs> yeah. <Whoa>. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a really annoying stupid so in the same uh <laughs> with the same level of faith uh that matt walsh's what is a woman documentary had ben stein made a documentary uh fuck what was it called i think it was like schooled or something where he like the entire hmm. premise of the documentary is like atheists think they're so smart but atheism's a religion too got them they're stupid oh, and that was like the entire documentary it was just like if we came from monkeys how come there's monkeys and like that's literally the whole documentary is just ben stein <laughs> doing that uh what, let's see if i can find the title he's got me there yeah expelled no intelligence allowed um <laughs> shitty name so yeah yeah. It was really bad. And I will admit, Expelled. there's like an inverse documentary that came out around the same time um, called Religulous uh, with Bill uh -huh. Maher. Literally the yeah, same year. That's I've crazy. That. Wow. Um, that one's actually all right. Yeah, um, that one's okay. I, I remembered thinking well of it at the time, but I think, I think it was kind of clouded by um, me... I guess, you know, growing up in a religious household and like 
you it's know, better really than being, spelled. I think the height of <laughs> when I watched it was like the height of my, how much I thought about like spirituality and atheism and stuff. Like now I'm like mm. pretty comfortable in my beliefs. I, I'm not like trying to figure out the answer as much. Like I can still think about it. I still have thoughts, but like it's not as much of a concern anymore. So I think at that time I was a bit more uh, charitable towards it, but I still remember at the time, like it wasn't, it wasn't like a substantive argument movie. It was just him kind of like laughing at religious people being like, you're stupid. And it's the kind of the same thing Ben Stein did. And yeah, it was better than that, but um, oh yeah, it's better than this expelled it's, it's like a no intelligence movie. alone. But it's also kind yeah. of just like, what's the purpose of it? Is it just to say religious people are stupid? It's like, it's not a great movie or anything. So <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, that was the that was a huge like atheist movement around that time. Like, it was popular. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. Well, speaking of uh, rabbit holes and things like this, uh, M Night needs an Oscar. Says, "What's the last internet no, rabbit hole you've fallen down?" Oh man, what? It's a secret. It's a secret. Secret. I recorded a, a commentary for a movie that I haven't released yet because I, there's too much of a rabbit hole, and it doesn't seem like that deep, but it's it's so interesting that. I'm like, okay, well, I have to make like a better video about this than just like a commentary thing. So I was hoping to have that like recorded um, this month or next month, but like I'm doing like a huge kind of like soft move to set up some stuff at like another residence and be living in two places at once. Like life kind of fucking is hitting me uh, and there's things that I need to yeah, attend to. Yeah, nothing takes so. more time than moving. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, trying to figure all that shit out and FedExing a bunch of stuff to another address, so. But hopefully mm-hmm. soon, I would like to have it. I, the, the goal would be this year, but I kept. I don't know if that's going to happen because of that. The yeah, Channel Awesome's got a good rabbit hole. I like that one. It's pretty deep. Yeah, Judy Hops. But I'm. Is that another one? No. I don't know who that is. I'm just. You'll get it later. Don't is that worry. Channel Awesome? Though? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I tend to jump around like various uh, like law rabbit holes, you know, like um, just whatever thing I'm into in the uh, the previous moment, like just going through stupid amounts of law, like because um, I watched House of the Dragon and started like, just looking at Game of Thrones stuff again. I was just like got lost in all that law and shit because it's just like so much to keep track of all these like families and names and just pages and pages of stuff I, that, that's my current one that i'm, I'm lost in but i'll just mm-hmm. jump from different law th- shit to other law shit and just forget half of it anyway <laughs> there's a wikipedia list of like a list of people who died unusual deaths that's like a pretty fun Ooh. thing to go through Mm-hmm. It's a pretty Sounds good fun. Rebel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's uh doesn't that have like a name of the something awards? Oh, there's Fuck. there's the Darwin Awards, but that's not yeah, just that's an unusual. Dar- oh, that's some something different. Darwin okay. Awards is like yeah. a specific criteria where someone has to either die or remove themselves from the gene pool without having had a child, uh, in a way that was their own fault and some sort of stupidity. So okay. <laughs> yeah, a Darwin award is like, Oh, you were stupid and you removed yourself from the gene pool either by death or like castration or yeah, like, yeah. genital mutilation or something. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Well, it exists. It's a real thing. Yeah. It's kind of mean, mean spirited okay. <laughs> in ways, but it exists. <laughs> Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah, the last huge rabbit hole, I guess, was Kimba for me. But yeah, that's Lion a big King twenty nineteen in a, I guess, just a large blanket subject. All that shit. Still working on it. Yeah, too scary. Yeah. You can you can dissect 
not anything, but there's a lot of things that, you know, everyone covers on a surface level that you could get so much more out of if you just really dig. Like the Lion King 2019 is something that like everybody had already reviewed and it's like years, you know, years had passed, but you can really just dig in there and find more things wrong with it forever. Yeah, when you're working with something like that, that fucked up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just <an> endless. <laughs> oozing. It is like an oozing postule of a of a movie, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you have any other answers? No, but I do have a question. All right, let's do uh, one more. Let's end with this one then from Tickle Me Baby Girl 827. The specialty box office is struggling immensely right now with movies like Tar, Till, and Armageddon Time, among others, all collapsing or underperforming. Do you think that the specialty market will recover with time or will movies like this become streaming only within a few years? What were, what were the expectations for Tar? <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. That's what I never understand with projects like this. I don't think it's even out here till next year. Yeah, that that's mm -hmm. a part of it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Got to build some buzz. But yeah, it's not with, out everywhere. Were they expecting that that to be like a huge hit? Because I was expecting to not even have a theater playing it near me. I just ma I managed to see it. It was awesome. Great movie. But I don't know what their expectations. Yeah, this is were. part of the thing. I feel like this is coming out more and more. Just like how we like measure success yeah. in this industry <laughs> you know like, and well, yeah, yeah like home video can be success too there's a lot of films that yeah. wind up making a profit in home video yeah As like we northman with actually the northman yeah yeah oh <laughs> i don't know i mean it depends on the movie like uh Revenant could have fucking flopped if it didn't have Leo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy in it, honestly. Leo mm -hmm. DiCaprio especially. Like, if Leo DiCaprio was not in the movie, it easily could have flopped. Easily. Um, yeah, yeah, Leo. Star power is like a draw. huge thing mm -hmm. for getting people into seats. That's why Chris Pratt yeah. is voicing Garfield <laughs> and Mario. <laughs> like, that's why Chris Pratt's just ev everything now. <laughs> Word of mouth can hurt these things too. Like that Amsterdam movie. Oh yeah. Star Power didn't help that. Didn't help that shit. Well, who's in it that we should be paying attention to? Amsterdam. A Amsterdam. C I know Christian it's like Spain. star studded, but like. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah. Or Margaret. Robbie. I don't know if people really see movie like Christian Bale's been in more than one flop. Fucking John David oh, Washington well, isn't like a huge good. John David Washington, yeah, he's. I like him. I like all those actors. It's just not a good You can movie. like them, but they're not... The only one in there that I would say would get people in seats would be Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift yeah, well, should she's have gotten some people in yeah. seats. But <laughs> yeah, she's not in it at all. If they put her on the poster, then they would probably get some more people in Chris there. Rock. <laughs> yeah. You guys should see it. Mm. We should talk about that one. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> so we should definitely talk about that one that would make for a good discussion I might see it eventually yeah if I don't have to go to the cinema I'd see it for worst of the year <laughs> we were we were Alex and I were actually thinking uh, next episode we should discuss Black Adam because yeah we haven't seen it yet yeah. but I'd be willing to yeah I gotta see make it. a theater trip for Black Adam yeah you gotta see Black Adam yeah, have same. you seen it Ralph already Bzz, fuck yeah Okay. It was pretty bad. <laughs> okay, great. Well, then it's not good. Alex and I will see it in the next episode. Yeah. Is it my turn for recommending a movie? Let's see. Uh, I was just going to. Uh, so, right? yes. yes. Oh, cool, cool. So I guess we could do that. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. All right. We'll be, we'll That's be our question. Uh, so I'll recommend the movie Boogie Nights from 1997. Woo! Hey. Bye. Finally, some people are going to be happy. I saw another meme about it. Yeah. Everyone's people coming keep now. keep memeing that I should need to recommend this movie. Thank you, And Ralph. I did. I just did. Yeah. There's a lot of memes about it. Love to boogie woogie. 
No, nope, I'm not recommending a shitty film. I'm recommending this one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Take that, commenter. Take, Take that, that look. fucking Take idiots. That. Mm-hmm. Well, somebody was like, I recommended The Revenant, and then immediately in the subreddit, there were people being like, why does Adam always recommend safe movies that he's seen before? I'm like, literally, my last one was Threads, then I'd never seen it. <laughs> it was literally literally my I last recommendation was one that I had. It's hadn't fun seen. to recommend movies that you've yeah. seen. Go fuck yourself. You Make should, your own you podcast. Recommend. How Jesus. are you supposed to know it's good? How are you supposed to know it's good? You should recommend movies yeah, that you've actually was seen. I, I prefer that. I didn't want to take I a risk. I prefer it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we've done like a healthy mix of like all of them by this point. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so we have. Yeah. Episodes. Grow but up. You don't even have to do that. Get one. real. You don't grow up. I would I would say yeah. don't do it. I don't prefer I don't prefer it. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm gonna recommend a three hour movie I haven't seen. <laughs> yeah, I you know, I've I recommended fucking <laughs> Satan Tango, okay? That was like eight hours long. Oh uh, yeah. Answer. That, that was, was like a complete sick. gamble. Yeah. Fuck you guys. Cheap right. Dillman. Uh so <laughs> if you don't want to be spoiled <laughs> if you don't want to be spoiled Spooky for Nights. Boogie Nights, nineteen ninety seven, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. Uh, watch it before the next episode. These episodes come out every two weeks. You can listen to them early by going to patreon.com slash Sardonicast, or by going to sardonicast.com signing up for premium it's only two dollars a month have you seen that meme that elon made where he was like oh coffee that's only lasts 30 minutes that's eight dollars but my twitter <laughs> website lasts 30 days for eight dollars well you're getting fucking tons endless amounts of entertainment for two dollars it's two dollars a month that lasts an entire month and you can listen to like so many episodes for early we do them like twice a month on average <laughs> that's a lot yeah. that's like four <laughs> hours worth that's a lot yeah and you're supporting us uh you can also buy some merch it's like one superior movie if if you're thinking about christmas you got to do it now buy your merch grandma will be very upset if you don't buy her something that says sardonicast on it um also a sardonicast highlights channel check it out subscribe to that you can hear highlighted discussions. Be like, "Wow, that was a cool one!" And nice moment. Yeah, nice little highlight there. Uh, happy Shrek. Cool cat loves to boogie woogie nights. Uh, thank you for listening. Happy scary bear. What's that? Oh yeah, from happy the Revenant. because the Revenant, you know, yeah. it's the scary bear. Yeah, okay, <laughs> scary bear. Happy expelled, no intelligence allowed. Oh, happy Ben Stein's money. Bye everybody. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>